talk to me about like the first you know step into this industry and like what you've done i know um mm. one of your first things were like going into like making belts and stuff like that so yeah belts was just a hot, i'm wearing one you're wearing the, one of them yeah. they're one of the <laughs> older ones i don't know if you can get that on camera you can take a be real later or something <laughs> um yeah but before that is a magazine yeah on know, the go with, right with espo yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and if you don't know that story espo is the clear air force too and that was really a turning point for nike in many ways espo's had a, a lot of turning points and certain things that he doesn't really get credit for yeah um and he's a, a dear friend and without his genius i really wouldn't have sharpened you know i showed up with a very rusty blunt knife and he helped me really sharpen that and uh his uh his influence even i met him in 85 you know graffiti writing and you know he was he'd gotten into like a magazine or a newspaper article or something and so then you couldn't really tell who he was and then you could and we we met and uh we we're just friends and he was doing this newsletter and it was a black and white xerox it wasn't even a zine it was like a graffiti newsletter in philly mm -hmm. and then at some point he hit me up and and i was in school for design i was just 89 and i'm learning computers and i think in 90 he hit me up initially i forget it's, it's all blurry but he was like i want to turn this into a magazine and you know what to do design wise and i was one of only two people graduating in my class that had digital portfolios in that way understood publishing or i wouldn't say publishing but some some form of digital publishing desktop publishing um and so that's really my introduction into how people sort of got to know me they wouldn't have known me before that locally mm -hmm. but at that point and then as the magazine grew as we sort of you know we never made any money it was terrible but creatively we were completely free and that sort of where we both sort of understood our creative natures fine art and commercial art merging and the magazine was an opportunity to sort of be creative in every way we wanted to be on our terms and get you know a few ads to pay for it and then we still had to work our jobs so that is really what is i mean that's why this is called uh, that's why it says on the go it's mm -hmm. on the go magazine mm -hmm. yeah. and it says uh 10 on the side which is let me see uh 10 class a years the reason that these are called the menthol tens um and the reason that this case study exists uh, is based on the magazine initially and a concept that i had even before that in the 80s noticing the swoosh and the, the spinnaker logo um so my story is this story of coming from being born in oakland oakland california i really don't know much about oakland but it is my place of birth mm -hmm. and being raised in la till age 12 and going through you know those years of homelessness out there my my family being a two pack a day type of family smoking mm -hmm. drinking drugs everything you could imagine it was really crazy moving to philly to get some stability because my father was there in 82 and then coming up in philly and understanding a, a sort of other different cultural nuances and, and being influenced in an East Coast kind of way, even from my family are all from Philly. So it was an East Coast Philly family, but we were on the West Coast, at least for me. My siblings were all born in Philly. And uh, they were living, my, my mother was with my siblings in the projects when she met my father and saw him as a way out. And it worked for a little bit. Um, and I ended up in Philly back with my father and those things were heavy influenced. And that's where, you know, on the West Coast, it was cool uh it, with a, a k a cigarette yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and newport really was at least from my perspective was an east coast brand at the time mm -hmm. and i was i was like oh you know here's this thing you know salem and my grandfather was smoking like benson and hedges and, yeah um but all of those things and why i'm bringing all this up is that if you don't know me you're getting to know me right now <laughs> um and in brief these are the things that created this pot 